what's going on guys we're with daughter fighting secrets welcome back to the channel so today we're not doing uh something physically practical today we're doing an exercise more in line with the realistic practical end of things you know we can talk all we want about where to place knives and how to set up our gear and our battle belt and like all of this stuff that like may probably almost 90% certainty will never happen, right? Like more than likely we'll never have to go and do CQB and like if we're not a cop or something like that or in the military, right? But today we're going to be talking about my plans, my personal plans for if shit goes south, like really south with the elections. Now, this is going to be geared more towards people stateside in the United States, inside CONUS, but like it could be for wherever you are. Like if some shit happened, right? If some shit really happened and like society started turning south and we we know from the past like five years that that's uh, absolutely a possibility. What are some things that we want to really think about here? And look, I'm telling you this as a man who's traveled all over the world, many third world countries. I have looked into this stuff a lot. Like I've been a prepper for years and years and years and years. So combining all of this experience, having gone through all of this high-speed tactical training, I have come to a place where I am going to sit down with you and tell you, in my opinion, having lived through some weird shit, what I would do and what I would recommend doing if shit really started rapidly deteriorating and going south because, for example, of the elections in the U.S. And that's a distinct possibility. So I figured that we would put this video out this weekend to give you guys some things just to think about. And I don't care if you've got 20 years in, you know, on the teams in special forces or whatever, right? This is still uh, some stuff to think about and take things at all angles. And I think that most of the operators out there will agree that taking things from all angles and listening to different guys' opinions on different things is something that's absolutely the mark of a professional. Let's jump into it, right? So um, this is just my opinion. Um, this is coming from personal experience and if you have different experience personally, like I'm saying, not your, your like, not your thoughts about it, but like personal experience, like, all right, let's, let's talk about it. But for me personally, I live in the city. All right. So, and I'm not going to tell you which city, but I live in the city. Um, if you live out in the sticks, there's some similarities, but there's a lot less urgency to it. Right. Because <laughs> more than likely, like, angry mobs and like shit like that are not going to come to like find you at your house <laughs> like miles and miles and miles outside of the outside of the city you know usually like the you'll be pretty safe out there at least for a while right so unless you got like weird country neighbors or something like that but generally from what i've seen I, i've never lived like that out in the country 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 but like i've been out there a lot i've done a lot of training out in the rural fucking parts of america um Generally, you'll know your neighbors and you'll be pretty safe out there. But I live in the city. So, like, one of the things that I will absolutely be doing um, from election night kind of on, especially if we see a contested election, I will be absolutely monitoring every piece of information that I can. And more so, like, yes, the macro, macro meaning like the larger picture is absolutely important. But on a micro scale, macro versus micro, micro is more like local, like in my immediate area of interest, immediate area of operations. That's like the city that I live in. That's what I'm going to be kind of monitoring, because if anybody like any groups or anything starts to really break down around me, I want to know about it sooner than my neighbors do. Like I need to know about it quicker than anybody else so that I can pack up my shit and leave and i can go to somewhere where it, whatever's happening here is not happening there and i don't care man like i've got a credit card bro i can go and check into a freaking like motel somewhere outside of like wherever wherever shit's really happening and stay there for a while now not everybody has that luxury obviously i work for myself so like not everybody has the luxury of being able to just bug out right away. Like, obviously, if you're like, if you work a nine to five and your boss requires you to be there the next day, then you got to make that decision. Like, you might have to wait a while longer and risk it. But the reason that I say that I personally will get freak out of there as soon as possible is I want to beat all the traffic. 
I want to beat all the mother flowers, like thinking the same thing. Cause there's going to be like three waves that happen, right? There's the first wave of people fleeing are going to be people like me, people who like understand <laughs> the process and are able to leave. And we're going to be the first ones out. Like we're going to hear about like, Oh, this and this, and this is happening over here in the city. Like I'm out. So yeah, I'm going to go over here for a while. And like, I'll come back when it's done. Then there's going to be the people that are a little bit, either they have, you know, they have something here or like they're waiting and seeing or whatever. Right. But they're still like, they're still anxious to leave and try to leave. Right. People who are monitoring the situation, but not fleeing at the first. And I don't flee from anything, by the way, running away. I'm simply repositioning myself. So I'll use that term. There's the people who are going to reposition themselves but are waiting until things really de deteriorate. And then there's the people who simply cannot leave. They might want to, but they simply can't. Um, or you could lump this in with people who don't care or don't know or don't, aren't... I'm just going to say it, not that intelligent. And they're just going to wait until the last minute. And then once everything's burning down around them, then they'll be like, well, maybe we should go somewhere else. <laughs> and like everybody's thinking the same thing the highways and freeways are all jammed up dude you're not getting anywhere like unless you can get a plane <laughs> even then maybe but like you know that's not a good idea so what you want to be doing is monitoring um local news local twitter feeds and yeah fuck, i don't call it x local twitter feeds any information human sources human intelligent sources and then obviously if you can get your hands on like a ham radio which it's not hard dude they're not expensive you can buy these things on Amazon for cheap, um, and you can't transmit on them unless you have your ham license, but you can listen to them. So listening to all of these police scanners and fire scanners, EMT scanners, all of this information should, should be – you should be getting all of this information. Now, again, intelligence drives the fight, right? So everything that you're doing should be driven by the intelligence that you're receiving again there's information and there's intelligence right so information is something that's unverified we don't know 100% if this is true but intelligence is something that yes we are verifying this like this is actually true this is we've taken it from you know raw intelligence we've kind of like looked at it and analyzed it polished it a little bit this is this is valuable intelligence now so this is what I'll be doing. And if I need to, right? Like if, if Trump comes out and wins right away and it's like, oh, swept the elections, I'll still be monitoring this shit because you never know, you know, what groups out there could be upset. Um, but dude, I, I carry a, <laughs> I ain't fucking worried, too worried about it. But like, I'll be cautious. But absolutely the most crucial thing about this whole talk that we're having, you and I, is I want to drive it into you that you should be monitoring as much information and trying to generate it into intelligence, right? So local news and then obviously like big five news, like the mainstream media, right? It's it's a resource. And then you've got all the media from on YouTube and online and everywhere else the uh, citizen journalists on Twitter, like all of that stuff, right? Even Instagram and Facebook can be sources of this stuff. So all of this stuff, all of the social media and media that you can acquire and accumulate. And then obviously you've also got resources like police scanners and ham radio and everything else, right? And obviously like we all know, there's really, really, really amazing um, open source intelligence analysts like S2 Underground. We've had them on our podcast, absolutely wonderful guys. And uh, a lot of other ones like that. Um, President's Daily Brief by uh, Mike Baker. Like these are two of the channels I, I listen to almost every day. I would absolutely be monitoring as much information as possible, but concentrate on an area of interest. Area of interest is obviously just like it sounds, wherever you are that you're interested in knowing about. Now that might be your city and it might be, you might have multiple areas of interest. You might want to concentrate on your city and like the city that's a couple hours away from you as well. Because if you want to go from this city to that city and that city's your bug out plan or a place that's like nice and you could chill there for a while, you wouldn't mind hanging out there if something happened here. Well, you wouldn't want to go from here to there only to discover that like there's the same or even worse. So you might have multiple areas of interest. One, two, three spots, right? Four spots. Doesn't matter. There's no, there's no limit. So areas of interest and then area of operation, area of operation is obviously wherever you are right now, wherever you're going to be operating for this period of time, 
I would be absolutely monitoring like all of the local information and news that you can. And again, human sources are invaluable when it comes to this stuff. So if you've got a buddy who's a cop, if you've got a buddy who's a reporter, if you've got a buddy who's, I don't know, right, whatever, working in the the town hall, like all of these people are very valuable for information and you should absolutely be, you know, sending them a text and saying, hey, Joe, like, what are you hearing, bro? What's what's going on? And Joe will tell you like, what the fuck is going on, like for real. So human sources of intelligence and can they, human sources can also help you verify open sources of intelligence that you have. And so you have to verify these, you know, this information that you receive to turn it into intelligence, right? And generate it into intelligence. So you might be able to verify that with a human source. Um, this is the type of thing that I would absolutely be doing, even if it's not for the election, for any disaster, for any thing that we are <clears throat> potentially monitoring that we need to potentially leave and bug out or do something. This is exactly what we need to be doing. We need to have our heads in the game monitoring what's going on now let's just say for an example we have figured out that like yes like shit's going bad here without a doubt things probably will start to get burnt down and and like it will get bad right what now well you want to get together like pack a bag <laughs> always reminds me man i remember i went to go train with james yeager um right after the pack your bags video if you know you know and uh Everyone in the class, dude, there must have been, I don't know, 20, 30, like pretty uh, squared away guys that were doing the operator training with us. And uh, everyone was like, pack your bags. <laughs> All right. If you don't know, you don't know. I'm not going to go into it. But um, what do you put in this bag? Well, obviously, you might want two bags, right? You might want a go bag and then you might want like a suitcase with your clothes and like whatever you would take on vacation, man. And like a little bit extra, right? But like when I say a go bag, I don't mean like, dude, go bags are, have gotten to such a stupid like. I'm not talking about like a military rucksack with like camping gear in it. I mean, you can do that. It's fine to leave that in your truck or whatever you got. Right. Like that's the, not going to hurt you. But when I'm saying a go bag, like I'm saying like the deed to your house, a birth certificate, like bank state like whatever documents that you would don't want your house to get burnt with them in it right like whatever you might need like just take it with you right or put it in a bank safety deposit box but like if it's in your like house or apartment or whatever and it's important dude put it in your go bag that's going to be what you're grabbing first also medications do you take any medications do you use any i don't know do you smoke cigarettes put a carton of smokes in there do you Whatever. You get my point, right? You like to take whatever. You like to smoke weed. Do put a couple of ounces of weed in there. Like whatever whatever it is, right? Um, medication, documents, and then uh, cash. As much cash as you can, as you have, right? Um, gold, silver, uh, like valuables. These things are going in your go bag. Um, extra ammunition and magazines for your weapon, if you have one. Uh, if not, you know, can of mace or something like that. Something to defend yourself. Other than that, I mean, that's, that's pretty much the essentials to put in your go bag. Uh, other than that, you know, like a, a, pon a poncho or a parka or some kind of waterproofing material would be good. A change of socks and underwear, some toothbrush, like a small hygiene kit, perhaps even a pillow, like not a big pillow, but like, you know, you can get like little camping pillows. Those things are excellent. And, um, if you can't get your hands on a pillow or it's too big to carry with you, like you don't have a travel pillow. Roll the toilet paper. That makes a great pillow if you need to. So things like that, um, sunglasses, you know, whatever, right? Keys to various things, safety deposit boxes, like what, whatever, like important shit that you, like if your house got burnt down, what would you really, really, really need? Take that with you, okay? Um, if you couldn't go back home for like weeks on end, what would you need? Take all that with you and put it in your go bag. So like, that's the first thing you grab, right? For me, my go bag, like that's, I'm going to grab it. I'm grabbing my Glock and I'm, I'm dude, I'm out. Like, and then obviously in your bigger suitcase, it doesn't have to be a suitcase. It could be like a big duffel bag or a backpack, or like a camping size backpack. It could even be a military rucksack. But I, I try to stay away from that stuff because it's not like I'm trying to be the gray man, but I don't like to stick out. 
And when people see me with a military duffel bag, I look threatening. I look threatening as it is. So like, I don't want to look like that. Um, you know, and perhaps I'll even, you know, I dress fairly nicely these days, but like, perhaps I'll even dress it up a little more to make myself look less threatening. So those things uh, are essential. And then obviously keep a full tank of gas in your car and make sure that your car is able uh, to go for a while, right? So if there's anything that needs to be fixed, like if you're like running on a shitty ass broken car um, and you can afford to get it fixed, like do it so that you can drive for a while and not worry about it. Um, so you've got your go bag, you've got your advanced information, your, your early warning systems are in place. They've been set off. You need to go. You're going to grab your go bag and your support kit. Um, in this case, like a suitcase full of clothes with whatever else you need, laptop, whatever, right? And uh, you jump in your car and you go before anybody else is going. This is the most important part. Um, you go before anybody else is going. That way we don't need any evasive driving or like ramming other vehicles or like Mad Max shit, right? So if you're forced to stay, um, the second best option here obviously is going to be bugging in. Now, um, there's a couple of things I would think about. Number one, like, okay, it's not a huge deal. If you have to bug in for a couple of weeks or a while, we all know how that we all know the drill there, right? Um, but here's what I would recommend. Just in case things really do go sour, have some food and some some water and some beverages. And like, I'm not saying, dude, like not spam, right? Like not fucking MREs. We've been through this already. Everybody's been through the lockdowns. They know, right? Like hanging out at home sucks. But like have things that you would enjoy to eat. Um, you work out, otherwise you're going to get fat. Like, again, we all know this, but yeah, like, you know, not just ramen and like backup emergency food, like, <laughs> you know, like maybe stock up on whatever kind of beer you like, like sodas, if you don't drink soda, but if you like sodas, like whatever, right? Like food that is like edible <laughs> and you enjoy it and you'll eat it like that stuff. Um, obviously like stock up and meat, you'll have to like resupply every couple of days, but like have... You know what I'm saying, like have stuff that you can do. And then obviously, like I'm sure Amazon and like UPS and everything will still be working. But just in case, do have that like backup month, two month supply of food. Right? I live in an apartment, so like I'm limited on how much food I can stockpile. But I still do have enough that would probably last me for about a month. Um, that's just how I roll. That's how I feel comfortable doing it. But the first things that I'm going to eat <laughs> are not like ramen noodles and freaking, you know, cans of beans, right? Like that I'm going to prefer to eat like steak <laughs> and like roasted chicken and vegetables and stuff like that. So I will continue to go to the grocery store until it's shut down or um, whatever, right? But you get my point, like stock up on whatever you can, toilet paper, paper towels, this type of thing, just in case you're forced to bug in and like supplies get a little fuzzy, right? Um, and we all know how expensive things can get as well. So getting things earlier, if you got the cake, uh, is, is a good idea. And I keep saying, if you got the cheddar, if you got the cake, if you got the money, because right now, like the whole reason everyone like needs to vote for Donald Trump is because we can't handle another four years of just inflation, dude. It's just like we like, dude, I'm paying 200 bucks a, a fucking week on groceries. I'm one dude, man. I'm one dude, right? Um, I'm paying like another 100, 200 bucks, 150 maybe a, a, a week on gas, bro. Like it's crushing, crushing everybody. So like vote for Trump. <laughs> but uh, those are some ideas that I'm having. And we won't talk about like self-defense, dude. This channel has been about self-defense. Since I don't remember when we started, probably around like what, 2015, something like that. It's been a while. Um, there's plenty of channels that will teach you how to like drop a mother flower, right? Um, but we're talking about the intelligent options that you can choose if you have to stay or if you can get out early or even if you are forced to leave at the last minute, then you know, you're just going to have to mad max that shit. But I have every faith and confidence that you can get yourself and your family out if you need to. Um, especially the guys who've been watching this channel for a long time. I've, I've put out some really awesome tips. And then all the other channels that do the same thing that we do, you guys will be fine. Just, you know, 
be smart. With that being said, comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are on the subject. And again, like, keep it respectful, please. Because like, if you, if you, if you come at me, like in a very rude way, I'm, I'm, if I reply, it will not be nice. So like, if you have criticisms where I don't mind, just like, be diplomatic about it. That's all I ask. Um, let me know what your opinions are though. I am curious to like, see what other professionals and what other longer term preppers and things like people like this have to say about it. And uh, I absolutely appreciate your time very much for watching. It means that you're thinking ahead about this stuff. It means you're a sheepdog. And thank you for, for what you do. Genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for looking out for your, your fellow man and your countryman. And, you know, from one, from one sheepdog guy to another, like, I salute you for that. Until next time, guys, please remember that you were your first and last line of defense. No, I'm not going to mention gutterfightingsecrets.com where all of our online training programs are available. Not, I wasn't even going to mention that. wasn't even going to do it. But it's because this conversation is just genuinely from like trying to like trying to suss out some things so that people can stay safe. With that being said, stay safe, motherfuckers. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.